you, saints, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you to our second service. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
open for us with a word of prayer. Amen. If you have any need, any desire for the Lord, just show by raising your hand as a brother prays. <clears throat> for you again this afternoon. Lord, the sing, Lord, prepare me, O God, be a sanctuary, dear Father. Prepare me, Lord, first, Almighty God. Cleanse us, Almighty God. Mold us, Almighty God. Until you can see yourself in us, O God. Father God, is only the way, Lord, which will shape us, O God, to fit your program, dear Father. Lord, you our programs, dear Lord. Father God, we want to take you at your way this afternoon, Lord. As you head in the morning, dear Father, how you love that Almighty God, that you will never lose, lose us, Almighty God. How you exalted us, Almighty God, to that heavenly places, Almighty God. We are not just singing about it, Almighty God, but we can feel it, Almighty God. We can see it, Almighty God, that heaven is my destination, dear Father. Heaven is my home. I am going to see the maker. Lord Almighty God, we want to thank you for bringing Brother Philemon this way. Lord Almighty God, may you bless him, Father. Bless his family, dear God. Bless his church, Almighty God. May you continue to use him, Father God. This afternoon, Lord Almighty God, he is the vessel whom you have chosen, Lord God, to speak to us again, Lord. Father God, we are ready to receive from you, dear God. May you use him, Almighty God. We remember you spoke to the, to the donkey, Lord. The type of Balaam, dear God. Lord, you can use the human being, Almighty God. Lord, we want to thank you this afternoon, Lord, for you be so gracious to us, Almighty God. You don't want us to die in that belief, Almighty God. Not to die in sin, Almighty God. For the way it has made for us, O oh God. Lord, Almighty God, we are chanting, O oh God, in that ship of thy, O Lord, God. And let us fall on it, dear Father. Help each brother, help each sister, Almighty God. Not to look at the situation, O God, but not looking at you, Father, in your promises, O God. We commit the song that into your head this afternoon, O God. He's taking this position, Almighty God. The congregation, they're in their position, dear Father. The musician in their position, dear God. Father, let the fire fall. We want to thank you and appreciate you. In the wonderful name, we we'll let us have you pray and pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Just turn to your name and say, God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. Amen.
love to bless the church. Amen. If the choir would come forward. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe the song they're going to sing is one in a million. Amen. You are one in a million. Just tell your neighbor and say, you are one in a million. One in a million. Praise be to God. Amen. One in a million. One in a million.
blessed, we are blessed. We don't deserve it, but yet, we are blessed. Amen. Let's sing that song together. We are blessed, we are blessed, we are blessed. We are blessed. Oh, we are blessed. Jesus. Oh. 
for the coming of the word. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Amen. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Amen. Christ our Redeemer.
army to take me to live with him eternally. Won't it be a wonderful day, brother, when we see him come and welcome his coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us just pray once more. Dear God, we want to thank you for the songs of Zion that have been sung. Thank you for the special that has been given. Lord, our souls are uplifted again in heavenly places where we can hear God's word, where we can fellowship, Lord, with you around your word and in your word. Father, we love your word. Your word is food for our souls. We thank you, Father, for the wonderful message we had this morning. Where are thine accusers? Lord, you told us where we came from, what we are doing now and where we are going, and that it's impossible for him to lose us. We will make it. We have made it. We will make it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for such an encouragement. Bless us now as we hear the second portion of this service. Get glory and honor to yourself, anoint the um, preacher, anoint our ears, that we may hear with the inner man and catch revelations. May it be revealed to us, may your word be revealed to us personally. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Yes, we well, welcome you again to the second session to hear God's word. How many are ready? How many are ready to hear God's word? How many were fed this morning? How many were happy to be here this morning? I believe there was a blessing that fell this morning, and we want to take it with us the remaining part of our journey. Amen. Just to remind you to listen to the tap uh, questions and answers. I think 640823E. Uh, please uh, listen to that tap when you can uh, today or tomorrow when you can uh, listen as soon as possible and just be with others. Uh, there are some blessings in it for you to catch and glean. I just wanted to also appreciate those who came yesterday for the outreach. A um, few people, Brother Doc. Uh, Shepard Mopa, Brother Oswald, family of uh, Tina, uh, Brother Bofu, and Sister Linda Bofu, and the children, Sister Titi, and the few people who came with us, Danis. Then that was the team yesterday. God bless you. Let's appreciate those who came for the outreach. We have so many people just coming to say you are doing the right thing. So many people saying thank you very much. God bless you. So many people are just thanking us for just encouraging. There's another church, and they were, I was preaching there on the street, and they just say, oh, thank you very much. It was easy for us. While you are preaching, people are stopping you, attracting people. So we're going to tell them, connect to God. Connect what he's talking about. It's about God. Are you right with God? He says, 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 oh, please. Next time, just tell us many people to come. While you are preaching, when the people are looking, they go and meet them. They go and talk to them there. When people are stopping, hearing what this man preaching on the street, then you talk to them. So we had so many people who some said they will be coming to church and uh, we want to continue. They've given us one Saturday a month to do that on the street. They permitted us. So we, the next one is on the 5th of November. So just remember that. Amen. God bless you. I don't want to take time. I want the minister to come and uh, give us what he, he is. So we are heavy. We are privileged again this afternoon to have Pastor Philemon uh, Aloti from Ghana. Uh, uh, the city again, the city you are in? Ashama. Ashama, is an Ashama, amen. Atema. So uh, we want him to, he used to be, before he came full time, he was a navigator uh, on the ships. He was a captain of the ship with the pips navigating. When if you see some country, when do they see a black captain, captain in a ship, they'll say, ah, let's see your qualifications. When you see your certificates, but since, but they didn't ask other captains from other ships who are white, they didn't ask them. But me, he says, the time they would want my paper, see, where were you trained? How did you become a captain of a ship? Amen. So we just sing, He's the old ship of Zion. He's the old ship of Zion. He's the old ship of Oh, my. 
foundation of the world that today I will be here. I have no idea. The pastor has no idea. But this is what you have done. And therefore, tonight, help me one more time. I am weak, but thou art strong. Without you, I can do nothing. Tonight, let somebody change his mind. Let somebody change course. Let somebody find his purpose. Let somebody find his way. Let the devil be cast out. Let the sick be healed. Even as we approach the communion table, then we can say, and from that time yes. that we come to this table, yes. something dramatic changed in our life. Yes. I am so blessed. Amen. I thank you, Lord, yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, happy to be among you. Amen. And uh, I am very overwhelmed Amen. by the love and support and the care Amen. and the friendship new friends. Amen. I just told your pastor you should come and visit me as in Ghana. Amen. And the time is passing by, you can come around. Amen. So that uh, when we travel like this, it helps us mm. to know that we are not alone. Amen. Yes, at least there are people almost everywhere. Amen. There are people who believe this message. Amen. This message is so powerful. Amen. It has gone everywhere in this country. Amen. You go everywhere, you see people believe in this word. Yes. That encourages that. Uh, yes. I'll go back home to tell them there are people in Sheffield yes. whose hearts are also aflame Amen. with this message of the power. Hallelujah. How many go straight this morning? Amen. How many have taken all the scare from their hearts? Amen. I want to assure you that is the truth. God can never make a mistake. Amen. He is an infinite God. Amen. If he is me, I can make a mistake. But God can never do that. Amen. If he know he will lose you, he will never call you. Amen. Therefore, stay assured. And when you meet the devil, ask him, where are my accusers? Amen. You are an accuser, you are a liar. Amen. Let every man be a liar. And God works with you. Amen. 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 The only thing you have to do is to put things right. Yeah. Because we have no time. Yes. There's no time at all. Yes. Anything can happen any moment from now. Yes. Make sure there's nothing between you and your sin. Yes. There is a way, there is a room yes. to make it right. Yes. Don't postpone it. Yes. Brother Brown said, when you keep it back, there are other good, but there was no time. He said, when he is a real Christian, he will put it right. Yes. But if you put it back, then he is not a believer. Yeah. Mm. If he hides it, he's not a believer. Mm. If he's a believer, you expose the devil and clear him off. And then we continue. And when somebody falls down, go and help him. Raise him up and continue the journey. Hallelujah. Now, tonight, I want us to open to Luke chapter 15. Shall we be on our feet? Another subject tonight, Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 5. One to one to wherever the spirit will let us to stop. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribe memory saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he speak this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having an hundred sheep? And he lost one of them. Does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which was lost until he find it. Until he find it. He will never lose it. And when he had found it, he left it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he have come home, he called his, together his friends and neighbors saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light the candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she have found it, 
She called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I have lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And a certain man have two sons. And the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of the goose which falleth to me. And he divided unto them in his living. Amen. You know the story already. Let's read First Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Mm, isn't it wonderful? Whom having not yet seen, First Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Whom having not yet seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophet hath inquired and searched diligently. They don't even understand how we were saved. It's, it's, a, it's a mystery. And they inquire and search diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what? What manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when he testified before her the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto him it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them and have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Shall we bow down our heads? Heavenly Father, as we come to this Lord's table, Lord, you place on my heart to bring this message to prepare us for your table. Come in your power one more time and preach the word unto us. Amen. That at the end we can say like the people of Emmaus, that did not our heart burn within us, even as he has found the scriptures unto us. Amen. Help us tonight one more time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And tonight, this evening, we want to talk about the greatest miracle in Bible history. The greatest miracle in Bible history. Hallelujah. Now we are in a time, especially in our part of the world, where everybody was chasing about miracles. And now it has produced so-called men of God who focus is on miracles. And they are employing all means, including evil spirits. Some are even having electric charges attached to their body. And when they touch you, it shock you and you fall down. And they say, ah, this church has a lot of power. Wow, what a powerful man of God. But today we are going to find out what is the greatest miracle. And you know, this message... The messenger of this age work miracle than any other human being on this earth. You know that. And he is going to tell you what is the greatest miracle he has seen. Is that right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now people are using demonic powers. And they are chasing. So it's like people are going to church today. Only by miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. So the question is, what is the greatest miracle in all the Bible? And I will take you to a classroom this morning when a teacher asked the students, who can show me the greatest miracle performed in the Bible? And all the teachers, the students begin to raise their hand. Teacher, teacher, teacher. They say, yes, yes, yes. Yes, Millicent. He said, teacher, the greatest miracle is that there was a wedding at Cana. And they shot one. But thank God Jesus was there. Hallelujah. And then they called Jesus. Please, the people shot wine. Teacher, Jesus asked them to fetch water. 
You didn't pray. Teacher, you didn't pray. They fetch the water, they fill the tank, and he asked them to fetch it, and it was wine. To me, that is the greatest miracle that has happened. <laughs> In the Bible. Mm. Teacher says, is that so? He says, yes. Another one reads, he says, teacher, he lied. There was a centurion in the Bible whose daughter was sick. He went to call Jesus. In fact, when they are on their way going, somebody came and told them the daughter is already dead. And when Jesus looked at the face of the centurion, there are two things. Faith is gone. Fear has taken a hold. So Jesus has to correct the two things. Say, fear not, only believe. Hallelujah. And then the centurion told Jesus, just speak the word. And he spoke the word, and the daughter was healed. That is the greatest miracle. Another student raises a teacher, that is not. Jesus had 5,000 people in the wilderness. And then, Lord, teacher, he took a fish. He broke it, the head grew a tail, and the tail grew a head. He broke it again, another tail grew a head, the head grew a tail, and Jesus keep on breaking. That is the greatest miracle. And he take a loaf, he break it, he begins to fill up. He break it, he fill up. And he fill all the 5,000 people. And it remained balanced. Teacher, that's the greatest miracle. I don't know where is the teacher, he lied. That is not, ah, there was a widow that lost his son in a city called Nain. This woman was crying. They put the son in the coffin, they nailed it. The teacher was crying, the widow, that is the only son. And they carried the boy, and as they were coming out, when all hope is gone, I like that. When situation fail, when doctors fail, when scan fail, when specialists fail, and they are sending the boy to the cemetery, then Jesus came. Then Jesus came. Brother, it was in the last hour. It was in your darkest hour. When you think all hope is gone, then Jesus arrived on the scene. And the psalmist said, when he arrived, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, all tears are wiped away. When Jesus comes, sicknesses vanish away. He takes the groom and he fills the life with glory. Situations change when Jesus comes to stay. And Jesus stopped the power bearer. He said, put him down. He said, young man, I say unto you, arise. And the guy arose. That is the greatest miracle. And another one raised his eyes, the teacher, he lied. When that boy rise up, the Pharisees say he didn't die properly. Maybe he's in a coma. So teacher, one day Lazarus died. They called Jesus. Jesus waited till he died properly. Correct, dead. Teacher, he died. Jesus didn't even come to the funeral. He waited, they do the funeral, they bury him. Three days, then Jesus came. And he said, where did you lay? The mother said, I know if you have been here, my brother would have died. And Jesus told him, your brother shall live. And he said, well, I know the resurrection, of course. We have been taught that when you are with us, you have been preaching that thing. I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believe in me, though he were dead, he shall rise. Still, Martha didn't know it was now. Where did you lay him? And I love to dramatize this in the funeral service. I love to dramatize that. Lazarus, he went to the Theophanies. He saw Abraham. He said, ah, you are Abraham. Wow. Come on, shake me up, Lazarus. There are some things. Ah, I thought you were a giant. You see, he didn't know he was dead. He is having a good time. Chatting with the Theophanes who are in the sixth dimension. Ah, I thought you were a giant. So you are small. He said, yes, just yes, small. But when the anointing comes, that's where we break all the soldiers. Say, ah, David. Wow, that's nice. Then they say, ah, you are Lazarus. He said, yes. We heard that you are a friend to Jesus. So, of course, he eats in my house. We chat together. We fish together. He even travels. He travels outside. And for about five days now, he's in the evangelistic ministry. So, 
We don't actually, so we don't know when he will come back. Then he said, ah, is that right? Then Jesus arrived at the cemetery. Lazarus! Then Lazarus told the two friends, ah, I told you he's my friend, he's calling me. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Lazarus said, yes, I'm coming. He said, I will see you in a bit. I will be back. Eh? I told you, they were calling me, I'm going. And then he started running. And then when he arrived there, he saw himself being bound with dead clothes. Ah, who put this thing here? He said, shut up, come forth. Lose him and let him go. That was the greatest miracle. Did you know that no angel rejoiced when Lazarus rise up? Have you thought about it? The earth shook, but the heaven was silent. Hmm? That is why when you announce somebody have cancer, he is healed, everybody starts shouting in the church. But when we announce two people were baptized today, people say, Amen. And the whole heaven starts shouting. The same sickness is everywhere. Today, one person baptized. Oh, amen. We thank God. One person baptized. But when we pray for the dead to rise up, the whole church will wake up. Oh, because we still cannot understand the greatest miracle. We cannot understand the meaning of this wine and this bread that is broken. We can't catch it. But today, I will let the prophet show you the greatest miracle. I know you know it already. I'm here to just remind you. Now, in chapter Luke chapter 13 and 14, Jesus started laying emphasis on the word of God. And the Bible said, then sinners begin to repent. And they begin to come. Jesus has his three ministries. The first pool was healing. The second pool was discernment. The third one is the preaching of the word. Now, you human beings are in three dimensions. You have the body, you have the spirit, and you have the soul. The first pool works on your body. That is where the prosperity message stands. God will heal you. Amen. God will make you get a visa. Amen. God will let you go to UK. Amen. When you die, that visa is useless. You go to Cambridge University. My brother, the Lord died. I took his certificate. He got from Holland. And we put in the desk room. He cannot work. The first pool. Let, let me ask you a simple question. All the people Jesus healed, where are they? Huh? They're dead. What killed them? Another sickness. Where are all the people Abraham healed? They are dead. So Abraham also is dead. That's the first pool. <laughs> Hallelujah. The greatest miracle in Bible history. And when they begin to accuse Jesus that he is now concentrating on sinners. I was very happy when you were showing the picture of outreach. That is the greatest achievement that any believer can have. To be able to point people you led to Christ. And I will show you by the Bible, that is the only one that has a reward. Nobody will be awarded for healing the sick. But Pastor, do you believe in miracles? Yes. There was a sister in our church, Sister Patricia. She had a cancer in the head. 
He went to the hospital. The doctor said they have to, she have to shave the hair. He said, no, in our church, we don't cut our hair. He said, but you are going to die. He said, I have a pastor that can pray for me. She believed it. And she came. And we lay hands upon her. And she went back to the hospital. The doctor told her, all the people you met here, they are dead. You refuse for your hair to be cut. And he told her, my pastors pray for me and the cancer is gone. The doctor laughed. He laughed. And he said, okay, do another scan. He said, I don't have money for another scan. The doctor said, as for this one, I will pay myself <laughs> to check that crazy thing you are telling me. You see, the power of God doesn't make, cra- it doesn't make sense for the intellectuals. The work we are doing is our best science. It is about mathematics. We are operating in a higher level. And I want to show you today that the level at which your pastor is put, is operating is far higher than those who are healing the sick. And the doctor said, I will pay myself. And he paid. That is 1,100 Ghana CDs, which is about 150, 100 pounds. In our place, it's a very huge money. The doctor, the doctor want to challenge the power of God. And he paid. And when they did the scan, no cancer was seen in the air. So we believe in miracles, but the level we are operating is higher than that. Ah, there was one time we are going to pray for a sister in the hospital. They call the place Mother of God Hospital. Me and another pastor, Brother Philip. When we arrived, the taxi came and passed with the red light flashing. Immediately we arrived, we saw the sandals on the floor. And the woman was lying on the reception, rolling on the ground, crying, my son is dead. Oh, my son. She was rolling. And something that touched my heart. Brother Philip, let's go and pray for the boy. We entered the emergency. The doctor saw us. They thought we are the parents, so they allowed us to enter. The boy was lying on the stretcher dead. We lay our hands upon her chest. We begin to pray. We call upon the name of the Lord. And the boy rise up. And the whole place was commotion. The doctors were shocked. And somebody ran and called the woman, your son is alive. Not knowing she is a Muslim woman who don't believe in Jesus Christ. And when we lay hands upon the son, they say, your son, he came there, running. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, Allah. Then he started, thank you, Jesus. I said, you will go talk through. You will talk through. It is the power of Jesus Christ. And Abraham said, any man called to preach this gospel have the power to heal the sick. Yes, we believe in miracles. Amen. Power of miracles. I wish I can preach the name of the Lord. It's a strong tower. Don't forget about that. There was this sister Enoch who was selling tilapia. He went to a house in Tema, a terrazzo house. You couldn't believe it. No bush anywhere. She was just cleaning the fish for the man to buy. And all of a sudden, he saw a snake coming upon her full speed. I never see that before. And then she shouted, Jesus! And the snake stopped. The snake cannot go forward. He cannot go back. The name of the Lord paralyzed the snake. And he was standing there. And people started running, coming. People went and take stick, coming to kill the snake. And the snake cannot move. He cannot turn. He was struggling. The name of Jesus have arrested him. Brother, if you have a problem today, the name of the Lord will arrest him. Amen. And you can be free. That's the power of Jesus Christ. That's why the Brethren said, take the name of Jesus with you. It will joy and comfort give you. In every situation, just mention it. The devil will be put to shame. Yes, we believe. I can give you testimony till we close. The power of Jesus has been demonstrated under these hands. Mortal hands. But when the name of Jesus comes around, every demon can be paralyzed. 
We believe in miracles. And this message has miracles. If you believe it, no demon can tempt with you. Amen. Yes, sir. We believe it. The power of Jesus Christ. That's the first pool operation. It heals your body. It doesn't go to your spirit. It doesn't touch your soul. That's why you can be healed and still go to hell. That's why miracle workers can still go to hell. So the power in me that healed the sick doesn't guarantee my salvation. Am I talking sense? If after doing those miracles, I don't obey the message, Jesus will tell you, I'm sorry, I don't know you. Thou worker of iniquity. He didn't say you didn't use Jesus' name. Now, those who use other powers will not even come near Jesus to ask him questions. But these people use the real power of God. And they say, Lord, I healed the sick in your name. They are not lying. Jesus is sure, I know, but I don't even know you. I'm showing you the greatest miracle. So when they say they are going to outreach, don't joke. Now, the second pool is discernment. That touches your spirit. You can go back to your, when you were a childhood to reveal. It's just like the word of God, cutting across. That's why when the pastor is preaching, you begin to feel the cutting in your heart as if he is ripping your mind apart. And the third pool is the opening of the word. That one saved your soul. And Brother Abraham said, you can even go mad and still go to heaven. Hallelujah. 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 You see, these things are very difficult to understand. And Jesus broke into parables. He said, how many of you that have a hundred sheep and what got missing? You won't leave the 99 and chase the 100. That God should love a sinner such as I. She will yearn to change my sorrow into grace. And he will never rest until he gets you. And you think when he gets you, you can escape from his hands? Ha! Huh. I was telling the church back home, when we are preaching the gospel, it's like frying the popcorn. When the corn is in the pan and the fire is under, some of them get annoyed. When we are preaching, some of them get offended. But when you jump, you will land. And when you land, the fire is still there. If you are a child of God, I can guarantee you, just backslide, you will come back. Some of them jump, too. The pastor should have said that, too. But when you jump, you will land. And if you are not careful, you jump and you don't land. And you leave the fly pan from fly pan to. Uh, don't try that one. So when you jump, land. Hallelujah. And he said, when he got it, he put it on his shoulder. And he came and called his friends. Come and see, oh, Philemon got lost. I got him. And he will begin to dance. He began to dance. He said, I got Philemon. God chased me into the middle of the city. I was escaping this message. Anytime I see him, I dodge. Because I don't want this message to cripple me, to uh, let me not live the life I wanted to live. God chased me to the middle of the sea. And one day, I was in the cabin. Some people came to me, they were chatting. I said, they should go, I want to sleep. And they left me. Immediately, I climbed the bed. Somebody came and knocked the door. I said, we see something in the sky, come and see. And I jumped from the bed and followed them, not knowing I'm still lying on the bed. I followed them, I climbed all the steps in the ship and appeared. And I saw this thing in the sky. 
when I don't know anything about this message. Be one with them on top of the ship. And it was coming down. Coming down. He said, ah, what is this? Somebody said it was a, it is a devil. I said, it is a devil when you call Jesus' name, it will fall down. When you call Jesus' name, and it is going to shake the earth. And when he was coming down, he saw the face of Jesus Christ. Beautiful. The hoof of my head. Appear inside, that's it. And he was shaking. I said, oh, everybody quiet, it was Jesus. He wanted to say something. And when he opened his mouth, thunders blow out. And all of us scatter. I went and fell in the dungeons in the ship where they throw all the garbages. I was lying there shivering. Then somebody came. Who is feeling me? I said, I'm the one. He said, you should come. I said, I won't go. I am afraid. He said, ah. He said, you should come. You say what? And he grabbed my hand from the ground. He lifted me up. And he began to drag me where he lived. I go. Until today, he is holding my hand. That God should love a sinner such as I should never rest until he came in the middle of the sea to make sure he grabbed my hands. And from that time, and from that time, that was 1989, and from that time, he is still holding me. He can hold you. And when he got me, the whole heaven began to shake. There is joy in heaven over one sinner that repented. That is the greatest miracle. Maybe I will go to the levels of anointing and you will get it clear. Now, the power that saves you is more powerful than the one that heals you. And don't forget this. That sheep already belongs to the man. Before he got missing, I want to take my time. This is a very difficult subject. The sheep belonged to the man first, pastor, before he got missing. So the man is going to find his own sheep, not a new one. How can that man make a mistake? Hmm? Take every fear from you, my sister. Take everything from you, my brother. His own sheep. That woman who lost the coin, the coin belonged to her first. It's not a new coin. These things, the par every parable of Jesus destroyed this two soul doctrine completely. He's not saving a new souls. It's the sheep that have been lost in Sheffield, they will all come. Maybe he's looking at you, he's looking for you in Zimbabwe. You run away, come here. He will still get you. You can never escape him. You can run away, he will catch you. He catch me in the middle of the sea. He can catch any one of his own. Now the prodigal son, he belonged to the man first. Jesus want to tell them the preaching and preaching, the third pool ministry is only for the predestinated. Yes, sir. That boy is the son of the man before he got lost. And since that day he left that house, that man couldn't sleep. Search love, search wondrous love. The boy was so, he thought he had done so evil to the father that the father would never receive him again. He went, got small dollar pound in his pocket. These young boys who have come now, when they get small pound, they don't respect anybody. They change their name. They begin to call them Ostropogas. The Pogas. So yeah, he went to university and he got a new name. Some of them, they have a new dress in their pocket. They go to university, campus, their dressing is different. When they come back to church, they dress different. You are not doing anybody. Those of you who are born in this message, 
I'm talking to a guy yesterday when they were driving me. You have a privilege that you open your eyes and you are already safe. Don't abuse that opportunity. When you lose it, you will never get it again. Young men and young women, what some of us suffer when I believe this message. My father was so much annoyed because he put me in the Bible school to be a pastor in the denomination and I escaped. Some were beaten. Some people, parents stopped paying their school fees and we, the church, have to take over because they believe this message. Some were beaten. Some were slapped by their parents. And you are privileged to open your eyes and you are already in this message. Don't lose that opportunity. Don't joke with it. It's a privilege. We don't get it that way. Yes, sir. So the boy, he lost everything. And he decided to come back. He was so scared. But one day he began to think that my father is rich. In houses and lands. He holded the wealth of the world in his hands. Diamonds and rubies. And I am the child of that king. Why should I be suffering now? I will arise and go back. And immediately he take that decision. The theophany is in heaven. They begin to move. He said, yes. We are going to get one guy. We are going to get one guy. We are going to get one guy. Some lost child is coming home. Jesus said the whole heaven begin to shake. While you are sitting down quietly, somebody come and sit down, they baptize him, you don't care. But when cancer vanishes from people's head, you clap your hands. And the angel said, what is this guy? What is crippled walking? Doesn't do anything in the kingdom of heaven here. It is not a big deal. It is not a big deal. But when they get him, when God got him, the whole heaven shook. That's the greatest miracle of all miracles. I don't want to run tonight. I want to take my time to break it down for you. I'm, I'm feeling good, brother. I'm feeling okay. The power of God is here to touch somebody who is planning. I mean, your, your parents have uh, caged me. They don't want me to enjoy the world. Just go there and try it. There's nothing good in the world. Go and try it. You see, the way some parents reach before God pull them, maybe you will not have that grace. So don't compare yourself with anybody. Your grace is God know you that when you are in that world, he will never come back. So he puts you in the womb of a believer. To give birth to you. That's it. You just have to thank God. And say, Lord, I am privileged to be born by a believer. I don't have to go through that hassle of life. You must appreciate it. But don't abuse it. When Jesus was casting out devils, let's go into the anointings. He said, I cast out demons by the finger of God. You get it? Finger. He cast out devils. Just a finger. Demons rise up, just a finger. Congressman Upshaw rise up from the wheelchairs by a finger. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just a finger of God. But when God is going to pull out the whole Egypt, it's no more a finger. He said, by a mighty hand. That's a higher anointing. A higher authority. Yes. To pull out Israel from bondage to freedom is a mighty hand. Now, when he is coming to save you, it's no more a finger. No more a hand. But his whole body have to die. 
in order to redeem you, that demands a blood sacrifice. So the work we are doing as ministers, preaching this message, transforming a sinner to saint, is a higher anointing. That's why Jesus has to kneel down and begin to even negotiate and bargain. Lord, if it were possible, this is too much for me. Let this cup pass over me. And the Bible says he prayed till his sweat became blood. I hope the medical doctors can understand this. How can sweat become blood? The man is dying and he is bleeding and he is crying. The great God cried because of you. I hope you can understand this. When you understand this, you will think that if Jesus passed through this thing to produce this blood, I should never do anything to disappoint that man. That's why he kneeled down and he began to cry. I don't know what to do. It's not just a finger. It's not a mighty hand. But the whole body. What about Brother Brown? When he's operating the first pool, that is healing the sick, raising the dead, he said they are little bitty angels, uh, babes. Little bitty babes. Make the blind to see. That's the first pool. Little bitty babes, so make the cripple to walk. But when it comes to discernment, he said they are doves. A higher anointing now. Then when it comes to the opening of the seals, is powerful seven angels. That is the level we are in now. Don't compare us to Oral Robert and Billy Grahams. They are in the lower realm with little bitty bears. You are in a higher anointing. Their message can never change a sinner. They can open a blind eye, but they can never send anybody to heaven. But we can open a blind eye, can descend your spirit, and send you to heaven. That's the greatest miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't compare those people to your pastor. He is operating under a third pool anointing, which contains all of them together. That's why healing takes place, discernment takes place, and your soul is transformed. From a wee smoker to a saint. From prostitute to a child of God. That power that can turn you around to become a child of God. That power that will look for you and bring you back to your original position is a higher anointing. It demands a price to be paid. He must die. The hand, the finger, everything must die. And when Isaiah saw it, his heart was broken. He said, who have believed our report? To whom the arm of the Lord revealed? When he saw Jesus being led astray, he said, he was led astray like a sheep. He was led to the slaughter. He was a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. And when we see him, we hide our face from him. He is not popular. That attitude to save you is not a popular thing at all. All the disciples ran away. They cannot bear it. Isaiah said, yes, he's a man of sorrow. He said, but surely he has borne your griefs. He carried your sorrows. We did a steaming, stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by only the stripes you are healed. Hmm. How dare you disappoint a man who loves you like this to lay down his life for his own friends. Rabran preached a message. He cares. But do you care? Jesus care. But what about you? Do you care? He died. That is the greatest miracle. And when that happened, the whole heaven began to rejoice. There was only one sinner that repented. Hallelujah. The hope, the work of Jesus is that he shall save his people from their sin. He 
came, Paul said he came to save sinners of whom I am the chief. There's no word in the scripture that says Jesus is coming to heal the sick. Those are bonuses. His main purpose is to come for the sinner. So if you direct one person to this message, you have a great reward. Amen. Hallelujah. And first Peter was saying, the angels marvel at that redemption work. They like to look into it. Prophets want to seek to it. How can God love me so much that he will pour his blood because of me? Who am I? Now the prophet gave us an understanding that we have a representation there. Eh? When Jesus was hanging on the cross, the Theophanes were questioning themselves that uh, this man supposed to save one last man before his days should come. There is one Theophany left in the presence of God that has to be connected. Brother said, when you are connected with your Theophany, nobody can pull you away from this message. And when they hung at him, there was a thief. He has not been baptized. He has never attended communion service before. But he has a representation. He was an armed robber. But he has a representation. He's a child of God. Brother, understand some of these things. Can you imagine? The man was an armed robber, but a child of God. Therefore, God must find a way by all means to connect him. So when he was dying, then the other guy said, Jesus. You see, Jesus was also between the accuser and the redeemer. Ha! I thought you said you work miracles. Why don't you do something all of us? Now all of us are suffering now. How, how possible you too you are suffering? Now when we are crying, you too you are crying. Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabbath. The other man says, shut up. We deserve to die. We are sinners. He paid the debt he did not owe. We owe the debt we couldn't pay. And this is somebody who is standing here. We have done nothing wrong. He campaigned for Jesus. And after he placed an application, he said, Master, I heard you are going to heaven. I beg you, this one, I have not been baptized yet. I don't even know where the church is. But I'm going to die right now. I beg you, please remember me. Oh, my. Oh, my. My, my. How many can pray that prayer? Lord, remember me. And then Jesus turned with all his agony. When he heard that, he turned. And the two families, he said, we begin to call one another. Charlie, one man is coming. One more person. One more person is going to be connected. They begin to rejoice. They begin to sing. And when Jesus told him, tonight, I will be with you in paradise. But Abraham said at that hour, he was justified, he was sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. At the same day, and there was joy in heaven over one sinner, one arm robber, that repented. Hmm. Brothers, if we get this picture, your behavior will change. I have preached this message for over almost 13 years. And I find out that the best is the people to know who they are. And they will behave accordingly. If you know you are a child of the king, you will never fall for foolishness. The greatest, the work that has been performed on you is so enormous that you should never disappoint Jesus Christ. <sighs> Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And the Bible said, put Romans 8 28 there. Romans 8 29. We will close very soon. And I want to show you that saith the Lord that you 
are going to be like Jesus. The Bible says if he appears, we don't know how he appears, but by all means we shall be like him. Whether you say amen or not, I have said it. Give me Romans 8.29. Ha! He said, for whom he did for new, he also did predestinated to be what? To be conformed into what? To the image of the son. Whether you like it or not, you will conform. Whether you are armed robber or prostitute, you will conform. Because it is that saith the Lord. Into the image of the son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, to whom he did predestinate, them he also called. How did God call, call you? It's because you are predestinated. If you preach that word predestinate, with any time you see the word predestinate, there's one word that follow him. For knowledge. For knowledge means he knew you before. You are not a stranger. To them he also justified. And those he justified, them he also glorified. This work has been done already. We are just doing a replay. We know the end of the match result already. This is just a replay. <laughs> I'm feeling good, brother. Hallelujah! And when you go to Ephesians 5, he say he will present to himself. Who, who will do that? You? You? Or pastor? Eh? Ephesians 5.25. He is doing all the work. He will present to himself a glorious church. Husband, love your wife. As Christ also do what? Love the church and give himself for it. That he, if you have a Bible, underline that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Who is doing that work? He, not you. Now, that he, underline that one too, must present to himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. You think Jesus will fail? You are a glorious church. Hmm. Without with that, he said what? And <laughs> without spot or wrinkling or any other thing, but that it should be what? Holy. And without blemish. Who is doing that job? He. This is the greatest miracle work Jesus did for you. That's why when you heard the message of the hour, you cannot pass by. It stop you. And you begin to listen. Because it is your name being called. And the sweetest voice in a man's ear is his own name. Hallelujah. Let Brother Brown speak and we close. I love to confirm whatever I'm doing in the prophet. We believe in miracles. But the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and eat righteousness, then all other things shall be added unto you. Jesus said, these signs shall follow, not lead. To follow them that believe in my name, they shall cast out demons. This time, after you believe, then the sign will follow you. That's why my brother used the word, God don't believe in super duper healers. Is that right? One time he gave the disciples powers. And the Bible said that 70 people returned, including Judas. He said, Master, in your name, demons are falling before us. Jesus laughed. He said, don't rejoice because of that. But there is another powerful one. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In that Lamb book of life. Brother Brown said, nobody can pull it out. 
is read and sang mm. and written boldly. Pardon. Amen. Let me quote from the spoken word to the original. Yes, I say God placed his word first before miracles come. Hallelujah. Amen. The Pergamon church, if you say, how can you tell the spirit apart? Just give them the word test. If they don't speak that word, they are of the evil one. As the evil one deceived the first two brides, he will try to deceive the bride in these last days by trying to get her hybridized herself through creeds and just plainly turning from the word of God to signs that suit them. So everybody is shunning the word and following miracles. But he said what? But God never placed signs ahead of the word. Signs follow the word. And when Elijah told the woman, bake me a cake for him first, according to the word of God, when she did as the word said, the proper sign came. So there is a red sign and there is a proper sign. Hallelujah. There is a fake sign and there is a proper sign. When you obey the word first, the sign will follow you. And Brother Brown call it the proper sign. Hallelujah. Another quote, Brother Brown said, how can you tell them? Give them the word test. How can you know it? Just speak the word and see what they say about it. If they don't believe the word, they have no seed gem in them. The seed gem that is in you, they don't have it. Now, they are of the evil one to de and deceive you. As the first bride was deceived, the second bride was deceived. They are deceivers of the third bride by hybriding the word and trying that God never placed signs ahead of his word. And Abraham said, Amen. And he said, that's a scorcher. God never placed signs ahead of his word. They were added for a proof of the word. For you to know the word is true. When I tell you the word said by his tribe you were healed, you shall be healed to know the word is the truth. A proof of the word. To prove it, Elijah said to the woman, bake me cake first. Hallelujah. I'm quoting from the message preparation. <sighs> the prophet said, how can you take a sinner like me and like you and make a Christian out of us? I can't understand. That is the greatest miracle. I, w I wish you put it on the board for them to see. This is a miracle worker, Brother Abraham, who has done miracle than any other human being. He is now telling us tonight that when God takes a sinner like me and you, and make a believer out of us. That is the greatest miracle. Hallelujah. Hey, you got it? Let's read it together. How do you take a sinner like me and like you. And make a Christian out of us? I can't understand it. That is the greatest miracle that God ever performed. Is that right? Now, follow. Hallelujah. He said, that God ever performed. It's when he took a sinner and make a Christian out of us. And if you can't, he said, look here. You believe that God can save anybody from sin because you have been taught that. Well, that's far more a miracle that a man that was dead in trespasses and sin, the man is dead and he is he, he had to believe or remain dead. And he had to believe or remain dead. And then after you are born again, you become a son of God. How much more ought you to believe in a lesser miracle like, like divine healing? Did you get it? So healing and miracles are what? Lesser 
miracles. But today, the denomination make it the top. And they put the word down. But we put the word up. And this sign shall follow you after you believe. This is the prophet talking. The one that opened blind eyes. The one that healed Sister Mary. And he rises up from the dead. He is telling you those are lesser miracles. And the greater miracle is to take a sinner like me and make me a preacher. It takes more anointing to fulfill that one. It's about time we get the priorities right. Then you know what you have. And don't let any cheap preacher take it out of your hand. You have a more powerful ministry than what they are having out there. A lesser miracle. That man that was dead in trespasses, born again, you become a son of God. How much more ought you to believe in for a lesser miracle like divine healing? If a, a, a life man ought to believe more than a dead man, that's what I mean. You got to believe it. You can't explain it. That's all you have to do to believe it. Because angels even don't understand it. The material among all materials, they have the same color. They have the same quality. Your siblings, your brothers and sisters in the same family, their faces look like you. But when God was cutting this shirt, he cut some of them scissors and threw them away. And you are still there. Hmm. She, 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 she. Not that their face look fine. Not that your face is better than their face. But God chose you. That's why Abraham said, does God love us? He said, yes. How does he love us? He chose you. When you are on your way to hell, God himself came and blocked you. He said, stay here. Go this way. That is the love of God. It's not about buying cars and building houses that you think God loves you. No. There are better people having better cars, but they are on their way to hell. But you are here because he chose you. And he love you. Appreciate what he have done for you. And Brother Brown said, because of that, we live a life of appreciation. Not to disappoint him. The greatest miracle. That's the prophet. You have to believe it. You cannot explain it. Because there are better people in your family than you. But God chose you. So when he asks you to play organ, play it well. When he asks you to listen, do it well. When he asks you to say amen, amen it well. <laughs> to show appreciation for the great work of God I've done for you. Hallelujah. Brother Brown said, in this court fellowship, greatest miracle that ever perform is what God can take something and convert it. The greatest miracle that God ever perform is to take something and convert it. It takes more power and more anointing and a pouring of blood to do that type of work. Hallelujah. And, and bring it back to itself again. So, God, you are a son of God. And you convert yourself. Like in the days of Paul, they accuse him that these people are turning the whole world upside down. No, the world is already upside down. We are turning it upside up and downside down. But because they have been in that crooked condition for so many years, the turning is hard. He said, these people have come here again. They are turning the whole world upside down. When you are drinking alcohol, your head is upside down. 
when you are sleeping with people's wives, your head is upside down. So the gospel is to turn your head. And the Abraham said, God should take something and convert it and bring it back to its original position. That's the greatest miracle. Which means you are already from there. Things that are to be are things that are be. Eh? So those who are already in heaven and they have come here, they are the same people going back home. How can God miss you? Ah! Ah! When you are already his daughter, you think he cannot recognize you? Ah! That's why when the disciples met on the Mount of Transfiguration, they saw Elijah, they recognized him. We are family members already. Before, before. <laughs> Hallelujah! When you see Peter, you will recognize him. Because in the theophany, we know ourselves. We are not strangers. In this world, we are strangers. That's why the Bible says we are pilgrims and we are strangers here. But in that place, we are citizens of the commonwealth. Hallelujah! Hey! And take something and convert it and bring it back to itself again. So those days where you are fornicating, you are not in yourself. In fact, you are mad. Now you are normal. <laughs> Hallelujah! You have been converted to yourself again. Now you become back to normal. Amen. Just like, like uh, uh, just some as you could science. Take an animal by science and drop a little drop of water on top of a hog and make it a lamb. Now, that's a miracle of it. Change the whole nature, your appetite, your attitude, your everything. That's what God does when he saves a man from sin. He changes his entire makeup. I'm feeling okay, brother. Philemon's entire makeup has been changed. Back to the original Philemon, who's supposed to love God and to be predestinated to behave like Jesus. You are back to original. You will now behave like Jesus. Don't behave like Satan. Hallelujah. He said what? Entire makeup. So greater miracle than any part of healing that I have ever seen. The prophet is talking. He has seen dead raise up. He has seen accident victim raise up in Finland. He has seen, and he said, the greatest miracle I have ever seen is when God changed Philemon to his entire makeup and make him come back to original. And Brother Brown said in another quote, don't look for miracle, you are a miracle. Hallelujah! A miracle! More than any part of divine healing that I have ever seen. And he said, by the grace of God, I have seen pretty near everything that I could ever think of or hear of. Done by the Lord Jesus Christ, even to the raising of the dead after they were gone. And still, I think salvation is the greatest miracle. And I also think that salvation is the greatest miracle. The prophet said he has seen the dead raised. He has seen miracles. He has seen blind eye open. He has seen congressmen rise up. But still, salvation of a son of God and a daughter of God is still the greatest of all miracles. Now, let me ask you a question. Who is the greatest prophet in the Bible? The greatest of all the prophets. According to Jesus Christ, is John the Baptist. What miracle did he do? He didn't say Elijah. He didn't say Elisha. He didn't say Moses, who opened the Red Sea. He said that what you went out to see, a prophet is more than a prophet. What did John do? He's a radical preacher. That preached and turned people's hearts. And they repent and he baptized them. 
He is doing the work of the greatest miracle in Bible history. And the Bible said, those that lead many to righteousness shall shine like a stars. God will add crown how many souls you have left led to this message become a crown when we go there. And when we go there, we will see those who never talk about people about their message. They have got the message, they are happy. They are eating it. They don't care about their friends, their schoolmates, their neighbors, their brothers and sisters, their mother, their father. They are happy enough. They are going to heaven. They don't care about anybody else. You will not get any crown. Change your attitude. Look, when you talk to somebody about the message, it's a seed you are sowing. God will water it. You can even forget about it, but God will make sure it will come. They become stars. The greatest miracle is a pouring out of your blood of Jesus Christ. Higher than raising the dead and everything. You can be certain. You can know it to be. If he ever perform any more miracle on you, but the greatest miracle, forgive your sin, that is the greatest miracle that God ever performed was to give you, to forgive human beings their sins. It's the greatest miracle. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. I am almost done. A sister in Brotherham Church called Sister Hattie Wright. They were making contribution to build a new church building, like people are doing now to get a new auditorium. And she brought her last money. And uh, Brotherham got to know of it. I don't know how he got to know of it. And he just said, Ah, this woman is so poor. Why should you contribute that money? Brotherham gave Along the way, Jesus crossed him. Stop. Where are you going? So I'm going to visit my sister Hattie. What is the money you put in your pocket? In her contribution, and uh, Jesus, she is so poor that I have to go and give her back her money. And Jesus told him, I was in Jerusalem one time. I was standing near the offering bowl. They were putting offering. A widow. Did I give it to her? He said, no. Go back. Don't block her blessings. So those of you who are in church and you don't care about contributing for a new church auditorium for this, you are blocking your own blessings. You are blocking your own blessings. And I told them back home in the church, when you give your son 10 cities, you go to school and pay them. But when he is coming to church, you give him one CD. You are teaching that child, God is not such a big deal. I don't know why the Holy Ghost brought this one to me. You are teaching your child school, very, very important than church. And when that child grows, and you leave church, you don't cry. Because you taught him that education is better than God. So Abraham sent the money back. And he went to Sister Hattie house. And he began to give the testimony. You know the story. The only thing said, Abraham, that is the truth. Amen. And then God came down. He said, ask what you want. Sister Hattie out and Abraham rise up. And the anointing was flowing. He began to go up and down. Sister Hattie, that saved the Lord. Jesus told me right now, ask what you want. Hey, Philip Mo, if it were me, if it were you, what will you ask? Talk through, talk through. This one, there's no hypocrisy. If it were me, pastor, ask what you want. Hey. Feel 
Lord. Ask what you want. Hey, God, God, you know my head already. Hey, hey, God know your head. Don't lie. You. Ask what you want. If the anointing came down right now, as I'm preaching now, and God said, I should tell you, ask what you want. What will you ask? Then Sister Hattie became confused. He turned around. He had a, a, a daughter who is a edif, a cripple. In Abraham Tabernacle, when all miracles are happening, but she is not healed, but she didn't leave the church because she was not there because of healing. He was there for the salvation of his soul. And he know there will never be crippled in the Hallelujah Square. Glory! She was not there for healing. She was there for her soul's salvation. And when she died, she will never be crippled again. She got that revelation. So they already confused the prophet. Say, prophet, what should I ask? Now prophet to confuse. Ah, what should you ask? If you ask ten thousand dollars, it will come right now. See the prophet also. Uh, it's like everybody confused, like we are all confused here. Ask what you want. Ah. The prophet said, $10 million, it will fall right now. Just ask, and I will give it to you. And he said, ah, you are not an edif too, is he a cripple? Ask what you want. And Sister Hattie turned. He turned around. God turned him around. He saw the money. He saw the sister sick. Then he saw the two sons who are lost on their way to hell. And the Holy Ghost pointed them. And he said, yes, brother, I remember the salvation of my two sons. And Brother Brown said that is, she asked the greatest thing. Hallelujah. She asked the greatest thing. And he said, I give it to you. And the boys ran and came and kneeled down. He said, Brother Brown, pray for us. And they were so, they were justified. They were sanctified. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they are serving communion in Abraham Tabernacle. That is the greatest miracle. In Bible history. Tonight, change your attitude. This thing was broken for you. For the forgiveness of your sin. He died for you. So that you must have life. He will pay all your debt for you. With his own blood. That's how much he loves you. Such love. Such a wondrous love. Shall we be on our feet? That is only that should come. Pastor, take over the greatest miracle. Oh, God, have mercy. Let's live a life of appreciation to show how great this God has done for each and every one of us. That we love him before all our hearts. And we should not compare anything to him. We should not put him in the second position. He must be first in everything we do. Because he suffered to set you free. Hallelujah. Amen and amen.